Last month, UK wrestling rebounded into action after a 14-month layoff. Tonight, we are back again at the UKW Arena, and this time, we await a day of reckoning. Welcome to the UKW Day of Reckoning kickoff show. I'm your host, Steph. Joining me once again, my esteemed panel, UKW General Manager, Lawrence Breeze. Rebound, what a show it was, and like, who, who can forget the massive brawl that we had. We saw the collective take on Marty Jones' security team. That was a, a seven on two fight, that's insane. Yeah, it was my show ever as well, uh, and my first one, and, and it was an all out brawl occurring. And you know, fingers crossed, we'll get a bit more luck tonight. But also joining us once again is the UKW play by play analyst, Brett Hadley. Good evening, people, and uh, I'm happy to be back here as well. You, you mentioned about the brawl and all the chaos that happened during the last main event. Don't look past the fact, though, that Jonathan Cedric had that all-out war with his, you know, enemy, friend, frenemy, you know, Mustafa Khan. They went to war, and Jonathan Cedric walked out of here with the UK Wrestling Championship last month. Yeah, and, I mean, what a match that was. Seriously. But we're not here to talk about that last month. We're here to talk about tonight. And we've got a stacked card. So what are you guys looking forward to seeing? LB? I'm looking forward to seeing... I mean, as you said, the whole card is completely stacked. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing... Jonathan Sedgwick made an announcement on on social media about how he's going to call out the collective. I'm I'm really interested in seeing that. Uh, let's see let's see how things go see if he's uh, if, if the collective are going to answer this because I'm assuming knowing Cedric like I do that he's going to make some form of challenge for talking about matches the Tommy Dillon and Jero like how can we not look past that match Jero's got a bee in his bonnet he's got points to prove and, and Tommy not a happy man is he yeah and, to, and Tommy, Tommy Dillon has, has done nothing wrong like, he, Tommy Dillon won a match that put him into the main event of, of the, the the Sedgwick Jero title match that is on the horizon, and like Tommy Dillon didn't deserve the uh, the outburst that Jero gave him, but we'll we'll see how it goes. It'll be interesting to see, and certainly from my perspective, this being my second time here. So, nope. what is that? That's that is the that's... music of Jonathan Sedgwick. Is he, is he coming out here? Is is he not waiting? Oh, here he is, UK wrestling champion, Jonathan Cedric making his way to the ring already. But you did suggest that this was a possibility. There he is. I was expecting this a lot later tonight, though I didn't expect this on the pre-show. First one, Jess and Jero Lewis. You can't blame it, because I promised you another shot at this championship. And you're right, I did. It's never get an opportunity in the main event of WrestleBration on July 24th. But tonight, I'm going to put the business in there. Carlisle or Winter. I know you can hear this. You alright? Can you rebound? You want to see my job? Well, tonight, his security is not here to keep us apart. So, why don't you join me in this ring right now? Cedric's calling out the collective here. Well, that's the call, that's the best one. He's not waiting around whatsoever. He's calling Cayman Carlisle and Henry Winter out to the ring here. Are they going to answer the challenge? Come on, they are doing your favour. It's two against one. Let's go! Cedric wants a fight, guys. Uh, Cedric clearly furious that the collective stuck the nose in his business last yeah, month. Yeah. This is it. Are the collective going to come out? I don't think they are. are they... I, uh, Cedric just pointed out. Oh, he's right, two right, on one. Oh, no. I guess he's not going to come out here to me. I'm going to come out there and fight with two of you. Oh, good grief. Wow. He's really ticked off. A Cedric, rather than being the hunted, he's becoming the hunter here tonight. He really is. Walking past us with intent. Well. Wow. Based on that statement from the boss, it looks as though a day of reckoning could be on the horizon for Henry Winter and Cameron Carlisle. I mean, 
What's going to happen for the collective now? I mean, Sedgwick, as I said, is furious. He's, he's, he's on the hunt. Like, I don't think... It's, it's been a long time since I've seen Jonathan Sedgwick act like this. Like He's, he's becoming the aggressor. You, we normally see Sedgwick in the ring. He's quite reserved. He, he takes his time. He's quite methodical. Sedgwick has actually gone into the back and hunting down the collective. That's not something I thought I'd see. He's got to be careful. There's two of them and one of him. Well, if anything does happen during this broadcast, we will try and get camera on the action as quickly as we can. But from one mission to another, the Jester J. Roy Lewis takes on wildcard Tommy Dillon, who is set. Here is what the number one contender had to say. Conspiracies continue. Sedgwick. I'm not going anywhere. You can throw every obstacle at me you want. You can do whatever you want to try and keep me away, but the fact is you know I'm the biggest problem you've ever had. And I'm the smallest guy, so you know I'm not going to give up. Just, I don't get it. I don't understand it. But maybe I kind of do, but that's fine. I will eventually get what I want. And speaking of obstacles, what right do the one city Phoenix and the wildcard Tommy Dillon have to get into my business. I mean, I kind of understand it from Sid's point of view. I mean, he's new, he's impressionable, and he's enthusiastic. He wants to make it to the top, wants to make an impression. But Tommy, you've been here over me. You get what it, you get, you get what it takes to try and pull your way to the top. I understand that too though, because I understand that your point of view is just pure jealousy. You just haven't made it yet, so yet you want to step on me to get there. Your day of reckoning is coming. You thought what happened to Sid Phoenix was bad? <laughs> Tommy, you know better. So, mark my words when I say this to you right now. You will be looking if you need a make it to this operation. There, Mr. Sedgwick, there I finally get what I deserve. I mean, we heard what Jester just said then. The title match that, that Jonathan Sedgwick has literally just made in front of all of us. Next month, WrestleBration, we will see Jonathan Sedgwick take on Jester Jerry Lewis in a heavyweight title match that that's the first thing like we, we've got that set in stone now but just something that Jero said then calling Tommy Dillon jealous I understand where Jero's coming from Jero's worked long and hard here he's been a student at UKW for close to five years he, he scratched and clawed his way to the top Tommy Dillon has also had that same path as him the, the kind of run parallel both of them have worked their way up at the same sort of time Jero's got there first and he, the way that he's seeing it is that he's seeing that Tommy Dillon is trying to steal his spotlight. I don't think that that's the case at all. Tommy Dillon just won a match that's put him in a, in a state where he's a referee. That being said, I, I, don't, I don't know if Tommy Dillon tonight is going to be able to, to deal with a jester in this mindset. Well, I mean, like you said, we've heard what Jester Jero Lewis had to say. So let's see what the wild card had said in reply. Come, Jero. Now you know that I have nothing but the utmost respect for you. I've seen you scratch and claw your way to the top, and it has done you well. And I thought you respected me. Hell, there was a time when you and I called each other brother. But now you're saying I'm part of a conspiracy? Jero, I am the special referee of WrestleBration for the championship match for one reason only. Because I respect that title. Because the right man should hold that title, the true winner, the true undisputed champion. And I want to make sure that that happens. But you want to say that I'm part of a conspiracy, that I lack respect, that I'm jealous? Well, then I guess there's only one thing left to do. A day of reckoning. I'm going to show you how much I respect you by beating some respect into you. And you will understand all roads lead home. Hashtag. Umbarekin. 
there is wild card Tommy Dillon who has to face J-Row tonight. He's going to be disappointed because he didn't leave here at rebound as the around the clock champion. And, you know, he, he will have the fans on his side tonight here. He is a firm fan favourite. He's got the determination. He's also got the strength. And I think he's got to use every bit. He's got to use the fans. He's got to use his strength and his experience if he wants to get past J-Row tonight. Because J-Row is in a state of mind. He really is. Well, I mean, both men certainly know each other very well. So how are you going to predict this one's going to go, Brad? I mean, I like Tommy Dillon a lot. I've got a lot of time for him. But J-Row's on a mission. He knows he's got the title match now. Sedgwick's just literally given him the, the heads up he's got the title match. And I think he will be determined tonight, and I can't see J. Rowe losing focus. He, he sees Dylan as an obstacle, and I think, I think he'll overcome the obstacle tonight. Well, Brett's going J. Rowe, LB, your thoughts? Uh, yeah, I agree with Brett 100%. J. Rowe is, is, is the one that's got something to lose. He's, he's been labelled the number one contender. Obviously, if Tommy Dillon upsets him here tonight, that puts Tommy Dillon right in that hunt yeah. that he's knocked off the number one contender. It, it's, I'm not looking past Tommy Dillon, because like Brett says, he's, he's, he's experienced, he's been here a long time, he knows what he's doing in the ring. The issue that he has is he's facing a j that he's never faced before. Th- these two have shared the ring several times. But j is not in the same frame of mind that we normally I see him. I said this last month, j has changed. Yeah, exactly. Like, he's mentioned it in that we saw that video. He, he's got in his head that it's a conspiracy. It's like everybody's against him. It may, maybe, he's, maybe he's right in thinking that. It, like, obviously, he was promised... Four, he, was, he was promised uh, 14 months ago that he was going to get a title shot. Yeah. That he's not yet had. So, all, all of a sudden, we're now at a stage where... He, he has to he, he has to somewhat sort of I, I don't know what I'm trying to say like I do but it, it's the yeah. it's the it's in his head and if he can get if he can get out of that mindset I, I fear for Cedric's title win I fear for Dylan tonight I fear for Dylan tonight but, completely but also like because he's not a sound mind that, that also has that unpredictability yeah well both of you in agreement again um for this one, if, if Jerry Lewis can keep totally focused. But speaking of focus, that leads us on to our next contest. Leone Rose has been on a dominating run since capturing the UKW Women's Academy Championship. And tonight, she takes on the Valkyrie, Victoria Adams. Uh, we saw the Valkyrie here last month. She, uh, she took on Alfie. Um, didn't necessarily go to plan for Victoria Adams. She... Uh, she came up a bit short against Alfie with that devastating spear. So I think tonight, bearing in mind she's got an opportunity to take on Leonie Rose, who is the UKW Academy champion, to, to set a mark down like, yeah, I am here and I want that championship. I think it's going to be uh, telling to see how Leonie deals with somebody of, of the Valkyrie strength tonight. Brett, you were quite critical of Leonie Rose <laughs> and how she turned her title at rebound. And I'm just wondering, how do you expect tonight's going to go or do you expect more do you expect less I was critical of it I didn't like the fact you know she used underhanded tactics to win the match and keep the title but she won you know at the end of the day she won and um, her opponent tonight has to be very very careful if she can overcome the underhanded tactics and be careful she walks away the victory otherwise the only Rose could keep that momentum going tonight what about you Albie do you, do you argue with that logic, or...? No, he, he's hit the nail on the head. Like, I try. <laughs> Leonie Rose has champion, champion's advantage. She, she can lose the match by disqualification or count out and still retain. That's obviously that's a big bonus for Leonie. Adams has got a lot to prove. Like As I said, she, she came here last month and it didn't go exactly to plan. No. Um, Leonie, though, to her credit, she has been, she's been down here at the Performance Centre. She's been working in the gym. She's learning new techniques. She's learned a new submission move. Like that, I find that very, very interesting because people like like Brett, we expect her to be the, the dirty cheat. Effectively, is yep. what I'm trying to say. But she's now adding new moves to her repertoire to, to catch opponents off guard. Like if you just watched Leonie Rose tape prior to lockdown, it was all the same. It was choking in the ropes, yeah. raking at the eyes. Now all of a sudden, she's got a new dynamic that all of a sudden. She could, she could drop you on your head and the next minute you find yourself all tied up and you're tapping out to a submission. Uh, 
for me, Leone again is 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 the one to something to lose, and she's got the advantage. She's got to win tonight. Well, it seems that both boys have the champion to retain, so it means we can move on to our other women's match as Alfie takes on a returning Natalie Wild. Uh, Wild, sorry. Do you care to share your thoughts on this one, Brad? It's a long time since Natalie Wild's been here in UKW, and it'll be interesting to see how she adapts to the uh, to the situation and um, see if she can basically get round Alfie, who's here every week, week in, week out. We've seen her a lot, uh, and, but we haven't seen Natalie Wilde, so we'll, we'll see how she copes with that. What about you, LB? What do you sit on this one? You see, I, I have a close personal relationship with Alfie. She's, she's one of my best friends outside of, of UKW. Um, so I know that Alfie and Natalie Wilde uh, aren't exactly strangers to one another. They're what? They're not exactly strangers. They, uh, they, they've... They've been working up and down the country together. Okay. Um, so it'd be interesting to see in a UKW ring. Bearing in mind, this is Alfie's home. This is yeah. where she, where she competes mainly. Be interesting to see how these two face off here. They, they normally work together in Coventry together, whereas this is, as I said, this is Alfie's home home turf. Effectively, she'll have the fans at her back. She'll. Uh, so yeah, it'd be, it'd be definitely interesting to see. If it's good, if, uh, if if it's going to be Wild or, or Alfie tonight, I, I think Alfie will take it as again purely for its home advantage. She's not had to travel as far, this that and the other. So for me, Alfie, Alfie does does win tonight. But I, I'm I'm looking forward to this match so extremely. Uh, there'll be you're leaning more towards Alfie on this one. Yeah, 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 Brett, where do you stand? I didn't know that they they have a history, but I'm I'm going with experience. And Natalie Wild, I do know, has the experience. Yeah. So I think if she can use that to her advantage, then she will get the victory tonight. Well, there you have it. Panel split completely down the middle on this one. So let's move on to a match that I personally can't wait to see. Confusedy versus <laughs> Billy O'Keefe. So let's see what Billy had to say about this contest. UKW Rebound was meant to be my return to UK wrestling. Unfortunately, I didn't quite go to my plan thanks to the collective. On the day of reckoning, I get a second chance. But unlucky for you, Steve, you're all the ones standing in my way. Right, let, let's, let's not beat around the bush. It, it's safe to say that Billy O'Keefe was robbed of his return last month. It's not oh, an well, well and truly robbed. Really. Yeah, it's, he, he never stood a chance with the antics of Carlisle and Winter. Like, how long did the match last? Like yeah, three on, seconds. Well, yeah, a pinfall is three seconds. Winter knocked knocked Billy O'Keefe out with a hard truth that took what maybe a second. That match yeah, probably five, the five seconds at the most. Yeah, exactly. That's probably going to be the fastest match in UKW history, and not for the right reasons. Technically, I think in this particular match, O'Keefe has more to prove. Really? Yeah, hundred percent he does. Like, he, he, like everybody else, he had a fourteen-month layoff. He came back. He wanted to show that he could still he could still go to the best of his ability, and he never got that opportunity. Where on the other hand, we see Confused Steve, his opponent tonight, yeah. who went toe to toe with Valkavius. Like, he really did. Honestly, like Brett, you know Valkavius. Uh, Steve gave uh, him a run for his yeah, money. Exactly. I was surprised. Who expected Confused Steve to I take Valkavius to the limit that he took him to? I certainly didn't. So yeah, that, that's where I stand. I, I want to agree with you, and it's going to be great to actually see Billy O'Keefe have that fair chance. But who do you have as the winner? Uh, Billy O'Keefe for me, he does. I don't think he's going to be easy. Yeah. I, I'm not again. I'm not writing Steve off in any way, shape, or form. But I just, I think Steve has something to prove. Sorry, Billy has something to yeah. prove. Steve did his proving last month. Nobody expected him to take Valkyries to the limits he, he took him to, yeah. and he did. Well, the, so yeah. Sorry. No, Before sorry. we get to your thoughts, Brett, mm -hmm. let's have a look at what confused Steve had to say about this match. Everybody laughs at me. Everybody mocks me. But do you know what it is? At Rebound, I stood toe to toe with the baddest man in British wrestling, MVK Valkyries. And I was this close, this close to beating him.
Billy O'Keefe. At Day of Reckoning, you will not have the chance to be this close because it will be my hand that will be raised after the match. And for you, it's just going to be like it was. One hit. Sorry, mate, but that's the way it goes. Well, I've seen that, Brett. What are your thoughts? Well, I, O'Keefe, if he wants to get the victory, he's got to come out of the box. He's got to catch Steve off guard. Um, Steve, like he said himself, he took Val to the limit. I think everybody in this building was absolutely gobsmacked at the fact that confused Steve put up a fight and made a damn good showing of himself against, you know, the most valuable killer in Valcavius. But the other thing we haven't thought of was Billy O'Keefe got blasted and knocked out. Is he still suffering after that happened to him? Is he fully recovered from that yet? So it'll be interesting to see if he is at 100% tonight. Well, once again, panellists split here. And the only way to find out what's going to happen is to head over to Fight TV and order Day of Reckoning now. But before we head down to ringside... As we're getting set for some tag team action featuring Los Luchadors. Let's see how they've prepared for this match. Hola a todos. Mi nombre es Torito y esto es Quesadilla. Sumo es. Sí, sí. Ah, sí. English. Sí. sí. We are from Chihuahua, Mexico. We have come here to this place, England. Do lucha libre, as you say, wrestling. Uh, yes. We do this pandemic do many training. Vita. Most of all, it's key to fuel your body with correct fuel. Loss! Oh! Ha! Dos masks! Saturday! Quesadilla! Sí. Separito! Sí. Los Lonchadors! We face Kings of Grappling! But we show them for real players de la lucha libre is. to the ring. <laughs> Failed miserably at that. I think they found the stairs. Yep. I don't think he quite understands. I 
maybe the mask oh. is impairing his vision. Hang on. He might have got this. I 100% with the lunch, and those are definitely ones that I think Burrito's tied himself getting into the ring. He's oh. exhausted, he needs a nap. Yes, Adia. Oh! oh. oh. I mean, they, they are luchas. Um, yeah. They fly. Beautiful entrance by Case Adia. Looks like he winded himself. And this is your to the ring, Bill Collins. And now the team of Clayton Andrews and Dynamic Chris Hart, the Kings of Rappling! Now on the opposite end of the spectrum, their opponents tonight... Well, money you deserve to see the Kings of Rappling here tonight. You won't do. Because my tag team partner has got made an injury. So I find myself a replacement for tonight. He's a... Then he's on the now. What? Yeah. got a replacement partner here. Dynamic Chris Hart pointing out that Clayton Andrews isn't here. Take out with him. It's Johan. Johan. You do what you can to get on the show. Makes sense. Am I seeing? Am I seeing that team? Is this Johan Hunt? Johan Hunt got his head kicked off by Bulgaria. Yeah. That's the boss, his boss, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, but as I've said, like, Johan Hunt finds a way to get onto a show. Dynamic Chris Hart needed a tag team partner. I've heard through the grapevine that without a tag team partner, this match doesn't happen. So Chris has probably gone in the back and found the first person he can find. Chris is experienced. Chris in his head will think that he can take both of these on on his own. This match is scheduled for one fall. I think uh, Burrito's telling them to share the hair. Obviously, Johan Hunt. Yeah, Johan Hunt has got a lot of hair and Chris Hart doesn't. <laughs> now we're playing rock, paper, scissors to determine who's starting this match. Looks like it's going to be Burrito and Johan Hunt. And now Burrito checking the referee. He's checking the referee. He's a do he, he, looks, he looks like a, a bit of a shifty character, that ref. Wait, I think, uh, I think Burrito out. thinks that the referee and Johan Hunt are going to lock up here. What? The referee? Chris Hart talking strategy with Johan Hunt. How long do you think they've had time to talk strategy, though, LB? I, I, I don't know. I, I, I didn't see Chris arrive. So, I, as I said, like if he, if he arrived just before this match, he, he won't have had much to much time to find a partner. He's, he's found one. So, oh, are we actually going to get the lock up here? There we go, Burrito, Burrito and Hunt locking and Hunt. up. Oh, there we go. And Attempting a wrist lock didn't quite work out for Mr. Hunter. I did not appreciate that wrist lock. Anyway. Not at all. I mean, I don't think uh, I don't think Johan Hunt appreciated his having his hand smacked away either. Nope. Here they go again. Calling an, an elbow tie up and a headlock. He's got a nice nice grip there, but oh. as he says, <laughs> thinks he's still got the headlock on. Look at that. Burrito slipped out the back door and slips back in. Now the strength of Bria. Wow. <laughs> Makes a tag. And now in comes Quesadilla. I think Johan Hunt is, and is Quesadilla. in some confusion. I get Quesadilla also putting his head into the headlock position. Again, the strength of Quesadilla on, on show there. You can hear Chris Hart telling... <laughs> Hunt to, to squeeze tighter on that headlock. 
Uh, Chris Hart wants the tag, gets the tag. This thing's about to get serious now. Uh, Chris Hart saying this is how you do it. Chris, Chris Hart obviously won half the king of raffles. raffles. Used to old school wrestling, I'm guessing, not these kind of shenanigans. He appreciates the audience interaction. Hi, uh, Chris Hart there taking exception to Burrito, trying to G up the crowd here. Oh, there we go with the wrist lock this time. Reverse. Beautiful reversal yeah. by Casey Deer. One more time, Casey Deer finding himself in a bit of a predicament here. Casey Deer holding on to the reversal. Smart move there. <laughs> Chris Hart trying to fight out of this. Can't do it. Casey Deer's got a hold of that headlock. Obvious, I think it's obvious that the Lundry Dolls are going to have the strength to advantage in this match. But we did see the way that Casey Deer entered the ring. <laughs> like, may, maybe that they also have the agility advantage as well. Flat on his backside, that's how he entered the ring. Waist lock. And Hart reverses back into a wrist lock. Transitions to a hammer lock, head lock. All the locks. Do you think Chris Hart's getting frustrated yet? I mean, he probably is now that Casey Deer is slapping away. Chris Hart asking what's going on here. He's not very happy. He says, saying that's not wrestling. But then gets taken over with a beautiful snapmare. So, there's nothing wrong with that snapmare. That was wrestling. Irish look into the corner is reverse. <laughs> Up and over goes Casey oh, Deer. Chris Hart didn't follow him. It's behind you, as they say. Casey Deer now realises Chris Hart with a kick to the guts. Loving. <laughs> Got a double wrist lock there. Now making a tag back in comes Johan Hunt. <laughs> a bit of double team action here now, both guys in the ring. Casey Deer in trouble. Oh wow. Both of them managing to drop Casey Deer. Bit of teamwork there. Casey Deer is down on the canvas in a bit of trouble now. Johan Hunt trying to reposition Casey Deer. Bit of aggression that we see from Johan Hunt. But it's nice to see maybe maybe that kick from Valkabia's last month. <laughs> maybe it woke <laughs> him up a bit. Yeah, jarred yeah. him a little bit. Or getting dropped on his head. Maybe. <laughs> now the referee needs to get Johan Hunt back out of the ring here. Hunt. Johan taking his time, isn't he? Yeah, but he's, he's, he's leaving. That top wrist lock applied. An arm break of both knees by Chris Hart. Choking away by the looks of it. I can't quite see his back is to us. The referee got to the count of four there before Chris Hart used, utilising all of the count. Obviously, you have until five. The referee disqualifies you on five if you're not breaking the whole crowd here at the UKW Arena, firmly behind Los Luchadores. From Chihuahua City, Chihuahua, Mexico. They have a load of little dogs there that run around. I bet they do. Place. I, I think that's the key, unless the oh. London Dolls have eaten them all. The drop toe hold by Chris Hart and the leg drop by uh, Johan Hunt there. <coughs> Modern loss of Luchadores have to do here to get back in this. I mean, to be fair to, uh, to Casey Deer, he has been double teamed quite severely for the last couple of months. No, there's a chirp away behind the referee. If the referee doesn't see it, it never happens. 
Chris Hart up on the apron protesting his innocence. Here comes Johan Hunt. And Quesadilla needs to get out of that corner, guys. Hey, Quesadilla, he's hearing Marita call out to him. Another Irish whip by Johan Hunt. Casey Diaz is completely spent. He's dis disorientated. He's got no energy. Calling for a timeout. He's asking for a timeout. There's, no, there's no timeouts here, Lawrence. For 14 months, uh, 15 months, obviously, we didn't see. <laughs> Lost $100 last month at all. I want to He's trying to tag the ref. <laughs> the referee isn't your partner. Oh, dear. And Hart again, using the ropes and choking the life out of Casey Diaz. Using every bit of the ring to his advantage. Dragging him over the ropes. Yeah, just using the, the ropes to burn the eyes. Oh, like a half Nelson applied. Oh. What is... oh. Hunt eventually flies in. He eventually flies in. Not going for a cover though. Got a, got a question that way. What's he looking to do here? Grabbing the legs of Casey Deer, trying to turn him over for a Boston Crab, maybe. Looks like what it is. He's, he's got it applied. Johan Hunt with a classic submission here. Will wait going down on the back. Got to think that this strength that's in Casey Deer. Oh, there you go. You see the leg strength from strength. Casey Deer. Manages to throw Johan Hunt off, but he's still in the wrong, wrong half of the ring. Dynamite Chris Hart is not the partner that you want to be tagging. But a kick to the back from Johan Hunt. Like a, an inside thigh kick there. This crowd trying to get behind Los Luchadores. Call it. There's really now some vicious forearms. Chris Hart head first into the turnbuckle. Frequent tags by Hart and Hunt here. And Casey Dia got the elbow up. And again, could this be the opening that Casey Dia and Hunt got kicked yeah. to the midsection? Oh. oh, I've seen this before. Oh, what's he you're in for a here? treat here. Oh, you're kidding. Quesadilla trying to get to the middle row. Oh, you're joking me. Oh, sunset a flip. Double sunset flip down for the cover. Oh, oh two and a half. Four count. A four count? Two people, but two. That's oh, a four. good grief. Look, look at Quesadilla's argument. Four count. Just when you think you've seen everything. But he still didn't get the victory. Are you having fun there? Oh, every minute. What are we witnessing here? I'm, I'm fairly surprised. Oh, it's a drop kick. Johan Hunt and Chris Hart, how well they've worked together. Yeah, we questioned how long they'd had to prepare and what they'd done, and they've actually been quite successful. Like, nobody knows how long Clayton Andrews is out for. This, this might be a, an interesting dynamic that Chris Hart might want to employ going forward. Maybe. Yes, I do. Uh, picks up Johan Hunt over the shoulder, looking for a huge body slam here. Aeroplane spins on his way round. He knows the corner that he's going for. Make the tag. It's over there. Come on, you can do this. He's a bit short on the tag. Couldn't quite get over it. It's a long way, that 20 by 20 ring, you know. It's further oh, than it looks. Casey Diaz looking in the wrong corner. Oh, turn around. Can I help him? Can I turn around? There we go. Hit the crowd here helping. Can I go down there and help him? Uh, no. Oh, he doesn't need my help because... There's a tag. There we go. A a tag. Finally, Burrito's back in. Steps Chris Hart and again. 
Went for a low kicking burrito jumped. <laughs> His heart stamping on the foot of burrito. I'm sorry for that. I'm sorry. I don't know if oh, no. to do that. Oh no, burrito's crying. He's upset burrito here. Oh no. Oh, burrito's not happy. He's limping as well. Rio's wounded. Please say sorry. Saying, look, look what he did to my foot. Oh, oh I tried to, uh, <laughs> to get him dumped. Is there a pen opportunity? There could be, but what is Burrito doing? Oh, is he going up top? Surely he's not going to go all the way, is he? Oh, he's trying to. He's on the on the first row. Nope. Uh oh. Hart no. got his foot up. And burrito looks like he's about to about to lose his balance. Oh. Oh no. Yes, oh, dear. In the worst possible burrito place. over. That. Right in the yeah. headland and south of the border. Wow. Family show, Brett. Oh, okay, yeah. Okay, yeah. Oh. Way south. As far south as you can go. We're gonna see a suicide dive. Oh you're joking. Not this. Surely. <laughs> Burrito stops, climbs out the ring casually, gets oh, no. and there he goes. Shot to the back. A wise decision, I feel. Very wise. For everybody involved. And now on the other side. Oh, we get it. No. He's calling for it. You'll see it. Hearts back to his feet. There's a tag. Johan Hunt is coming back in, and I don't think the, uh, the Lunchinos know about it. Lunchinos celebrating. They're having a conference in the corner, it's just got interrupted. Now this, now this team of Hunt and Hart trying to beat down the Lunchidors. do si do Irish Whip gets reversed. Oh, that's two big boys coming back. That Irish Whip didn't get reversed in the meeting of the minds in the ring there for Hart and Hunt. The Lunchidors might have got the momentum they needed here. Ah, it's been sent to the outside. It's ceremoniously like dumped over the top rope there. Johan Hunt, the legal man. Brito tagging in. Quesadilla. Hunt has lost his insurance policy. There's nobody for Hunt to tag at the moment. Uh-oh. Get the nachos! Get the Get what? Get the nachos! The nachos? Get the nachos, you're about to see the most devastating move in professional wrestling. Not the tables, the nachos. And they actually have nachos. Wow. Hunt has not moved. We want nachos! Hunt needs to get out of there. We want nachos! You can't eat me! What the heck? The double nacho shuffle, maybe? I think it's a victory. There you have. What did we just witness? Exactly sure. Marita and Quesadilla with the You Can't Eat This double nachos to the head. Quesadilla for you. And do you know what? They get to eat their victory. They do. And that's worth it out. Let's, let's be fair though. It's still a effort from Johan Hunt and, and Chris Hartley. Chris Hart thought he was going to be working this match with his, with his tag team partner, Claire Andrews. He's found, he's found a partner in the last second. So obviously... I am lost for words after that. 
Just when you think you've seen everything, folks. Ladies and gentlemen, it seems that we've got word backstage that cameras have caught up with Jonathan Cedric. Oh no, uh, let's go back and see what's happening uh, backstage here. We'll get to see backstage and see what Jonathan Cedric oh, here we go. Oh, here he is. Cedric on the hunt for Cayman Carlisle earlier on and Henry Winter. What's this? Cedric came out here at the start of the show looking for them. I mean, <laughs> we've, got, we've got the lunchy dog. Oh, he appealed us. I was just going to throw that out. Did you hear what happened just then? No. We, we, we what can, happened? We can see Jonathan Sedgwick. That's Jonathan Sedgwick on the screen. There was, de there was definitely somebody called his name. It was definitely a shout. That's what made Sedgwick turn around. It sounded like J-Row. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we'll try and get that feedback as soon as possible. Are you, you all right? You're not a Chris? I, I, I might just have choked a little bit inside. But, but it was beautiful. Quesadilla and Burrito nearly killed Steph. Steph? Yeah. You, 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 you nearly killed him with your Doritos. Who is Steph? Who is Steph? Magic. Who is Steph? I, I think I think you do need to go. So until we can get that feed restored, I guess we have no alternative but to press on with this show. I think that's the best idea. But that would mean that we've got the two title matches to discuss. Mm. First up, we've got Shake the Tomb defending his around the clock championship against the one Sid Phoenix. I mean, how do you see this one going, Brad? Well, Sheik McToom obviously is now the two-time around the clock champion. That belt can be defended 24 hours a day, seven days a week, wherever, whenever. And uh, it's in the ring tonight, Sid Phoenix against Sheik McToom. Even if Sid Phoenix wins the match and wins the belt, it doesn't necessarily mean he's going to walk out of this building tonight as the around the clock champion. And I think Sheik McToom somehow, some way tonight, will leave here with that title. He certainly seems set on retaining it. I mean, what about you, LB? What's your thoughts? Yeah, Brett mentioned it. He's a, McToom is a two time champion. Uh, of, the, of the around the clock like, obviously it's a belt that was purely introduced last month and he's already won it twice like, that shows how quickly this thing's changing um, is McToom going to beat Sid Phoenix tonight? maybe maybe not the last time these two clashed it was a street fight and McToom, uh, McToom came up on the on, on the, the back end of that Phoenix uh, Phoenix uh, won the street fight but obviously Steph, I know you've seen Phoenix today. Like he's walking around. He's got he's got two bad knees. Like yeah. he's, yeah. he's not he's, not, he's, not he's, he's walking right. wounded, isn't he's he? He's absolutely he battered. So, yep. like whether 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 or not McToom wins this match or not, I think by hook or crook he leaves tonight. Still the the ATC champion. Uh, I mean, with a championship that is defended twenty four hours a day, seven days a week, anything can happen. I mean, we saw that stop. last month. Someone else is getting involved in this match and then stealing it away from themselves. <laughs> but we have just one more match to talk about, and that is the UKW Eliminator between Kane Taylor and the Alpha Predator Rex Savage. I mean, LB, can you just give us a little bit more information on what this match is about? Yeah, uh, effectively, this match is a number one contenders match for Rex Savage. He's in there with the, the champion. Now, normally you would see a champion and a challenger in a one-on-one -on -one contest. Normally it's for the title belt. Like that's, yeah. that's what we are accustomed to seeing. Kane Taylor basically challenged Rex Savage, saying, if you can beat me, you can have a title match at Rex oh. That That is effectively what was supposed to happen. So tonight, if Rex Savage can beat Kane Taylor in that ring, which... He very well could do. Rex is a massive man. We saw him last month yeah. taking on Tommy Dillon. We know we know his, his raw power. He's a monster. But he's yeah. in there with Kane Taylor, who in his own right is a monster. So it's gonna be it's gonna be a very, very classic match. Two big men knocking one and yeah. knocking each other to bits. It's I gonna mean, be very, very interesting. We have heard your thoughts, LB, but let's throw it up to Brett. <coughs> let's see. Who do you think's got the advantage here tonight? You've brought up a very good point there, uh, LB. They are both, you know, they're both monsters in their own way. And Kane Taylor has been a very dominant champion. I think if he can prove his dominance again tonight, he can beat Rex Savage so he doesn't have to defend the belt against him. Then he might just come, a, come and be one of the most dominant champions that we've ever had here in UKW. So that's, 
that's the uh, the point for Kane Taylor there. If he if he wins tonight, he can put it behind him and move on. If he doesn't, he does have to defend that belt at WrestleBration against the man Rex Savage, who is you know as we saw, like you said, a bit of a beast. So it'll be interesting to see which way it goes. So we can have a battle of the behemoths because uh, the panel's split here tonight. And as we get set for Day of Reckoning live on Fight TV, we do have confirmation that Mustafa Khan will be starting the show and explaining what's next for, for him after that bitter disappointment of coming up short in his last attempt to capture the UKW Championship from Jonathan Cedric of Rebound. I mean, let's think back. What are your thoughts, Brett? Well, Mustafa Khan and Jonathan Cedric went to war. We saw it before the collective got involved and after there was mutual respect there between those two guys Cedric came away with the belt and Mustafa Khan after the match was reflective it looked like he was about to hang up his boots but he didn't get that far tonight who knows what he's going to say yeah the, the, the rumours circulating the, the back obviously the front offices the, the rumours are that Mustafa Khan is, is ready to call his career he, he mentioned yep. it he's 47 years young Mm -hmm. The man's done it all, especially here at UKW. He he's really a multi-time tag champion, yeah. a multi-time heavyweight champion. Literally, the man has, has got that legend got status in the back. He's got nothing left to prove here. Exactly, but the problem that he, the way that I see it, is Mustafa Khan is going to he's going to look back at that that match at Rebound, and he's going to see Cameron Carlisle mm. and Henry Winter sticking the noses in, in in his business, and he's going to take that personally. I, we, we all know. That that isn't personal. We, what we know is that, that it was personal for Sedgwick. Yeah. yeah. Mustafa Khan, unfortunately, was just a victim of the timing. But now, is it personal because of that? Yeah, Mustafa Khan will be definitely taking it personally. So I, I for one, cannot wait to see what Mustafa. I think that the rumours and innuendo here tonight that he's retiring are actually false. I, I, I honestly can't wait to see. I'm interested to see what his response to what the collective did. Yeah, 100%. We're, we saw it. We're, we're here at ringside. Like Henry Winter is he's being dragged out by security for, for no reason at all. Like, I understand they have the issue with Cedric. I understand that. Mustafa Khan is is suffering from his match, and Henry Winter like pops him in the back of the head with a jab, completely uncalled for. So yeah, I, it's, yeah. I hope, I hope. I hope for everybody's sake that it's it's not Mustafa Khan. If it is. I, I completely understand and respect his decision totally, yeah. but I, I personally I hope that Mustafa Khan has got many, many more years to come inside UKW. It will be interesting overall. I mean, I'm with you guys. I think without Mustafa Khan, I mean, I wouldn't be here. So I'm, I'm really hoping that Khan doesn't like fix to retire here tonight. But I suppose in the grand scheme of things I mean that's kind of all we've got time for here at the pre-show um, so it's not too late to still see Day of Reckoning live on Fight TV right now and from everybody here at the pre-show I'm Steph Hindle and I've been joined by Lawrence Breeze and Brett Hadley and then Day of Reckoning is next I just, I'm just going to throw while we've got a couple of minutes on, on live air still yeah mm. What's on your mind? Well, no, I've just, I, I, Steph just said, like, it's your second show with us. Like, you wouldn't be here for Mustafa Khan, like. Exactly. If you were Mustafa Khan, you know, and you were, want, and you, you know, would you want your last match to be marred in such controversy? Would you want to be remembered, you know, your last match, would you want it to be remembered as the match where it was lots of interference and... No, it was chaos. Not. I wouldn't. Of course not. No, you want to go out it's, on a high. It's, yeah, it still is. That, that moment of saying, of, of ha literally hanging up the, the robes and saying, yeah. It's a I've big decision for anybody. Exactly. But you want to be remembered the right way. And if it was me, I'd want my last match to be memorable for the right reasons. Yeah. Yeah. And at the moment, I don't think that is the case for Mustafa Khan. Yeah. We, we all saw Mustafa Khan. Marty Jones was sat inside of us. He, he, really he, was. Was, he was ready to, to, to throw that match out completely. He, he, I, He's the only man in the country that could have called, could call that match over yep. when there was literally the only way to win that match was pinfall or submission. Marty Jones was ready to throw it out once the collective got involved. Like to your point, Mustafa Khan. Like, we, we, we know Mustafa Khan very well anyway. Like we know he's a proud man. Like he's a very, I, very I proud man. I can't see Mustafa Khan wanting to leave UKW and retire 
on a loss. No, exactly. No, no me neither. And not, and not such a loss that is marred with such controversy. Exactly. And disrespect, I think. Definitely disrespect. Oh, the collective don't care about respect. We know that. You know, they don't care who, who they... Uh, <laughs> who they upset and they'll have this forever war with Cedric well I guess we're about to find out Day of Reckoning is next live on Fight TV Hot Cedar